This hour's track is a white matter track uh, located on the outside of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. It is formed by C fibers whose cell bodies are in the dorsal root ganglion and they have free nerve endings out in the skin or in an organ. And the second half of the pseudo bipolar neuron comes in and gets into this location, which is where this hour's tract is. Then these fibers travel down two segments or one segment, uh, and then they synapse in the substantia gelatinosa. So they also go up one segment or two segments and synapse here. Okay, so that's this hour's track. So here is a schematic of what I just told you. So, uh, as shown here, um, we have our dorsal horn neurons coming in, and this is true on both sides. I want to make sure you understand that. It comes in and ends up in this uh, area right here, and as, it, as shown here, the fibers go up or down two segments before they synapse into the substantia gelatinosa. The second order neuron then comes out, goes across, and ends up in the anterior lateral system going toward the thalamus, the, the spinal spinal tract. This slide is intended to demonstrate the clinical significance of Lissauer's tract. On the right side of the slide, we have a representation of a brown saccard syndrome. That's a hemisection of the spinal cord. In this case, it's on the left side of the body. And the uh, blue here is fine touch and proprioception, green is pain and temperature, and red is motor function. And having a color there indicates loss of that function. So we have a hemisection here on the left side, uh, and you can see the green, um, I'm sorry, you see the red, and we have paralysis from here on down. Uh, we also, because we have damaged both dorsal columns on this side, we have lost pain and temperature below the level of lesion. That's clear. But we also have a small area of extra loss of pain and temperature right here, which is due to Lissauer's tract. So notice that we've cut Lissauer's tract. But many of these fibers have come down two segments. So generally, there's about two segments above the level of lesion where there's a pure loss of pain and temperature because these are C fibers that are coming in that carry pain and temperature information. So that accounts for uh, a brown saccard. On the left side of the slide here, we have um, an entire transection of the spinal cord, and the same thing occurs, uh, but on both sides of the spinal cord. So here's our extra area right here, two segments above the level of lesion. This is the thoracic cord, um, say around T12, coming and we have an extra uh, loss of pain and temperature up to T10. And that is due to the loss of the C fibers that are right here, coming in, as shown here. Uh, descending two segments right there. So if we cut right there, we've actually cut these fibers on their way down. Another thing I would like to mention is that if you use the Blumenfeld book, you will find that um, this extra bit right here is missing in the um, figure. And also he's got a picture of the cervical spinal cord. So 
I've actually included a real thoracic segment in the figure, and this has been fixed from your book, if you're using that book.